Oh, and thank you for joining us for Money Matters Presents, Loan on Me, Steps to Repayment. In this presentation, you will learn about student loans, repayment, repayment options, and much more. Let's get started. My name is Katie Beck, and my colleague Rachel Mason and I used to be the Student Central Advisors that oversaw Money Matters. We recently both transitioned into an academic advisor role, but we are still seeing Money Matters content this semester. Because of that transition, Money Matters is online only. So if you're interested in earning moolah for this workshop, you will need to watch the entire workshop and then do the reflection that is linked below on the Money Matters page in the comments. If you complete this workshop in the month of May 2024, you will earn $10 in moolah and be entered to win one of our semester or one of the grand prizes for this workshop. If you're completing this after May, then you will still earn your moolah, but you will not be entered to win either the semester grand prizes or the workshop prize because the semester ends in May. Now, speaking about moolah, for those of you that don't know or don't remember, moolah is essentially raffle points that gets you more options to win our grand prizes. Each Money Matters activity, such as this workshop, other events, online activities, and monthly challenges are assigned a moolah amount. The more moolah you earn, the better chance you have of winning the prizes. Today, if you complete the workshop reflection at the end of the recording, you can earn $10 in moolah. You're now only $5 away from being entered to win one of the grand prizes for this semester. Now, speaking of prizes, for this specific workshop, Loan on Me, we are giving away a $50 MyCon gift card to anyone that completes the reflection. And then as long as you earn the $15 in moolah, again, this event, this event is worth 10, 15 means you qualify for one of our grand prizes. This semester, we have a $100 value secondary prize of a gift card to Eau Claire Downtown Coffee, The Informalist, and The Dive. It works at all three businesses. There's also a summer days package worth $200 in value just to kind of get you out and about this upcoming summer. And then finally, each semester, Wisconsin Credit Union sponsors a $500 scholarship that any student with $15 in moolah qualifies for, whether or not you receive financial aid. So that's a really important prize that students are really interested in. So make sure you participate a lot this semester. Now, these are just a few, and I mean a few, of our past Money Matters winners. Over the last six years, we have had thousands of students win prizes for attending various Money Matters events. We have had past winners win Roombas, grills, outdoor patio sets, espresso machines, and hundreds upon hundreds of dollars in gift cards. And that's just to name a few. Now, let's get into our topic of student loan repayment. We're going to start with some terminology that will probably come up during the presentation, or maybe some terms that you've heard in the past and don't know what they are. This can be a very dense presentation, especially if you're graduating this semester and have so many other things going on. So please don't hesitate to email us at moneymatters@cvtc.edu or call Student Central with your questions. Money Matters is available to CVTC graduates, so you do not have to stop getting our assistance once you graduate. Okay, first we're going to learn about federal loan servicers. What does that even mean? So these are companies that manage federal student loans. Essentially, when you are awarded loans, the Department of Education tells one of these companies that you qualify for loans and how much they can lend you. Then one of these seven companies it grants you the money and sends it to CVTC and CVTC uses it to pay for your schooling. When you pay back your loans, you're paying back your loan servicer, not CVTC and not the Department of Education. It can be confusing, but the thing to remember most is that your loan servicer is who you can contact if you have questions about your loans. We will review how to find your loan servicer later in this presentation. Just know that you're not paying back CVTC. Next up is a grace period. A grace period is a set of time after you graduate, leave school, 
or drop below half-time enrollment before you must begin repaying your loan. The grace period gives you time to get financially settled and select your repayment plan. Not all federal student loans have a grace period, especially the, the specialty ones. The unsubsidized and the subsidized loans that are the most common do have a six month grace period. Also for many loans, including the unsubsidized federal student loan, interest will accrue during your grace period. Another thing to keep in mind is if you took a break during your program, switched programs, or went below part-time at any point, you might have used some of your grace period. So it's important to reach out to your loan servicer to figure out how long you have on your grace period when you're coming up on graduation. Retirement is a temporary postponement of payment on a loan that's allowed under very certain conditions. During times of deferment, subsidized federal student loans have no interest. However, federal unsubsidized loans and other specialty loans will still accrue interest. Think of a time um, when you might not be able to make your payments and it's something that other people go through too. So the most common is an in-school deferment. If you decide to come back and finish your bachelor's degree, if you want another associate's degree, or if someone's coming back after a break, after they didn't get a degree, you can apply for a deferment for being in school. Other things include disability, or low income. So this is just something to keep in mind. Um, reach out again to your loan servicer if you feel like you might qualify for a deferment. Similar to deferment is forbearance. Forbearance is a benefit of federal student loans that allows the borrower to temporarily stop making payments or reduce federal student loan monthly payments. Some forbearances are required to be granted by your loan servicer and others are only offered at the discretion of the servicer. Interest will continue to be charged on your subsidized loans and other loans. During a forbearance, you are responsible for paying the interest that accrues on all types of loans. Your loan servicer, again, decides whether or not they will grant most forbearances. Since student loan debt is extremely difficult to get discharged, even in bankruptcy, it's best to work with your loan servicer or lender to keep your loan in good standing during tough financial times, especially if you may want to refinance. Federal student loan forbearance suspends payments similar to deferment, but it allows the borrower to skip loans due to hardship or other issues. Misuse of forbearance through consecutive or long-term periods in forbearance goes against its purpose. The purpose is to provide short-term relief Interest continues to accumulate in loans on forbearance, so not paying the interest does get you in a deeper hole than before. Deferment and forbearance sound the same, you might say. Well, there are some differences. The main difference is the time, the qualifications, and the interest. If you were to return to school right now, you would request a deferment through your loan servicer. If you were going through financial times, you would request a forbearance. Just a reminder that the difference is interest accruing with the forbearance and not accruing with the deferment for some loans. No matter which one you choose, it will not affect credit score. A delinquency is a missed payment on your student loans. The first day you miss a required payment, you're considered delinquent. Your loan servicer is required to report a delinquency to at least one National Credit Bureau. If you are delinquent on your student loan payment for 90 days or more, your loan servicer will report the delinquency to all three major National Credit Bureaus. If you continue to be delinquent, you risk going into default. So if you continue to be delinquent on your payments for up to 270 days, your accounts go into default. When your account is in default, your account may be turned over to a collection agency, and this will have a negative impact on your credit score. The consequences of default can not only impact your ability to borrow, but can also impact your finances. Consequences include the entire unpaid balance of your loan and interest becomes immediately due. This is called acceleration. 
you can no longer receive deferment or forbearance and you lose eligibility for other benefits, such as the ability to choose a repayment plan. You lose eligibility for other federal student aid. Again, your default is re reported to credit bureaus. Your tax refunds and federal benefits may be withheld and applied towards your repayment. Your wages may be garnished. That means your employer is required to withhold some of your pay and send it directly to your loan servicer. And or you may be charged court costs, collections fees, attorney's fees, and other costs associated with the collection process. Again, as we mentioned on previous slides, if you're struggling to make your payments, reach out to your loan servicer because this process costs them money as well, and there are a lot of deferment, forbearance, and repayment options. Now we're really going to get into the reason that you're here, the three steps to loan repayment. It's gonna be broken down into three easy steps, and we promise it's not as hard as it sounds other than making the actual payment. So you need to do your loan exit counseling, find your loan servicer, and set up a repayment plan. Step one is to complete loan exit counseling. This is an interactive learning module similar to the loan entrance counseling that you would have done the first semester you took out loans. It's okay if you don't remember the entrance counseling because the exit counseling is very similar. It is required for borrowers that are graduating, entering a grace period, or entering repayment for any other reason. So if you've ever taken a break from school, dropped below six credits, withdrawn from a semester, or if you're graduating this semester, you probably or will likely receive an email from our CVTC financial aid office telling you that this is required. If you aren't sure if it's required, it's best just to do it, or you can reach out to your loan servicer to see. If you speed through this loan exit counseling, it is always available to you on your FSA account. This is a great way to go back and review what you learned. As mentioned, you will log into your FAFSA account with your FSA ID and password and complete it all online through the Department of Education. Now, step two is making sure you know who your loan servicer is. Again, we already mentioned that your loan servicer is the company that manages billing, repayment, and other information related to your student loans. They will be whom you communicate with about all things repayment. On your FSA dashboard, you will be able to find your servicer and either set up an online payment or at least find their contact information. Nowadays, most loan servicers have like an online payment option through the Federal Student Aid dashboard, but not all of them do. To find your Federal Student Aid dashboard, you'll want to log in to your FSA website or the same website you did the FAFSA. Now it should automatically take you to this screen here that you're seeing. This is an example of what it may look like. Everyone's is different, but you can see how much you've borrowed in loans, the amount of grants you received, but not the scholarships you received. You can also see upcoming payment information and connect to your loan servicer. If you click on view details, you can see each individual loan you have taken out with the principal, accrued interest, current balance, interest rate, and even more. The dashboard even has quick links for some helpful resources, frequently asked questions, and more. So again, this dashboard on the right-hand side where it says My Loan Servicer, this is where you want to see who your servicer is, and then you can click the link that says Pay on Servicer Website. Last step is choosing a repayment plan. There are a handful of different repayment options that will adjust your monthly amount, terms of repayment, and more. Note that repayment plans do not disqualify you from having interest. You will still have to pay interest. You can select a repayment option during your grace period, or you may be assigned one. However, it can be changed at any point. So if you're struggling to pay or have the opportunity to pay more, consider adjusting your plan. There are a lot of different kinds of plans and not everyone qualifies for each plan. Some plans will mean you pay considerably more interest, so be sure you read the description of each plan before you choose. On the next screen, we will see a QR code for a video with repayment options. As mentioned, 
This is a QR code for a video outlining some repayment options from federal student aid. Again, the best place to go to learn more about repayment is your loan servicer, but this video is a fantastic way to start to learn more. So step four is not always a choice for student loan repayment, but we do want to make sure we discuss these options. There are four options for student loan elimination cancellation, forgiveness, discharge, and debt relief. If you're no longer required to make payments on your loans due to your job, this is generally called forgiveness or cancellation. We'll cover a few examples in the slides to come. The Public Student Loan Forgiveness Program is a loan forgiveness program for people who work in public service. This includes working in a federal, state, local, or tribal government, or for a not-for-profit organization. You also need to work full-time and make 120 qualifying payments. That's 10 years of payments. This still qualifies if you are under a specific repayment plan, but you do have to make 120 qualifying payments. Borrowers that teach full-time for five complete consecutive academic years in very specific circumstances with very specific qualifications do qualify for some forgiveness up to $17,500 on your loans. Again, for both teacher loan forgiveness and the PSLF, reach out to your loan servicer or check out the FAFSA website for more information. Discharging your student loans means you're no longer required to make payments on your loans due to specific circumstances not related to your job, like the other programs. We will cover some of the ways that people get discharged in the following slides, but again, the best place to go for more information is the Federal Student Aid website or your loan servicer. If you are totally and permanently disabled, you may qualify for a discharge of your student loans. You do need to show that you qualify for total permanent disability discharge by providing documentation from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the Social Security Administration, or a physician. If a school closes down while a student is attending or shortly after graduating, loans may be discharged if you meet specific criteria. One of the most recent cases is Globe University. The idea of this is you can no longer use those credits to transfer or some employers might think of your degree as less um, valuable than people who are in schools that are still open. So that is why your loans may be forgiven. Um, again, a recent example is Globe University. Um, an older example is ITT Technical Institute. So if a school were to close after you got credits, reach out to the federal student aid and or your loan servicer to see if you qualify for closed school discharge. While we hope this does not happen to you, your student loans can be forgiven due to the death of the borrower or the student on whose behalf the PLUS loan was taken care of. Keep in mind that family members are never responsible for paying back student loans and your loans will be discharged if you are not around to make payments. Did I tell you earlier that it's not possible to get your student loans cleared if you file for bankruptcy? Well, for the most part, it is true. But in some very rare cases, you can have your federal student loans discharged after declaring bankruptcy. However, discharge and bankruptcy is not an automatic process. It's not impossible to get student loan debt canceled, but under the current law, again, it is not easy. A student loan borrower seeking to discharge their loans in bankruptcy court must initiate what's called an adversary proceeding. Essentially, they are suing their student loan lenders in bankruptcy court to prove that they meet the standard. In most cases, student loan lenders, including the U.S. Department of Education, will oppose the borrower. Adversary proceedings can be long, exhausting, and if the borrower hires private legal counsel, expensive, which itself can cut against the argument that you have undue hardship because of your loans. Something to remember is that private companies may contact you with offers to help you with your student loans for a fee. The U.S. Department of Education and loan servicers 
offer to help students for free. There is a great program through Ascendium called Grad Ready that provides video lessons, helpful resources, tools, and tips to help you succeed, including paying for college, money management, real world finance, learning to learn, and life skills for success. CVTC does partner with Ascendium to offer this to all of our students for free. You can find it on the Money Matters page in the Commons. All right, and thank you again for attending this session on repaying student loans. If you have any more questions regarding student loans, financial aid, or any other financial literacy topic, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at moneymatters at cvtc.edu. Again, don't forget to do the workshop reflection to earn your $10 in moolah and hopefully qualify for the $50 workshop prize.